Good morning, friends. Buenos dias, amigos y amigas. My name is Kenny, and I work at San Mateo County Libraries. Mi nombre es Kenny, y yo trabajo por las bibliotecas del condado de San Mateo. And thank you so much for joining me today on this beautiful Thursday morning for Music Playtime. Yeah! Gracias por venir esta mañana para nuestro programa Tiempo de Juego Musical. And if you have a moment, this is a good chance to, or it's a good time to go grab your musical instruments that you have laying around the house, uh, if you have any. I brought today, with my guitar, of course, an egg shaker, and some drumsticks. Remember, you can make drumsticks kind of out of anything, right? Uh, and if you want a good tip, you know what makes a really good drum? Pillows. <laughs> and not too noisy, too. Uh, so, si tienes algunos instrumentos musical en su casa, tráiganlo, tráiganlo, porque lo, lo, vas a, uh, lo vas a necesitar, right? You're going to need these instruments. You're going to use them today, right? So we're going to sing, we're going to dance, and we're going to play music together. Remember, this program is about us playing music together. And I'm going to be singing songs in both English and in Spanish. So vamos a cantar, bailar, y tocar música juntos hoy día. Y voy a cantar canciones uh, en inglés y también en español. And I just learned a new song, so let's try it. <laughs> Hopefully it goes over well. So esta canción es nueva para mí. And the song is called Five Little Monkeys. Five Little Monkeys. And I'm going to need your help, of course. So you're going to help me count. We're going to start off with Five Little Monkeys. And then each time we're gonna go one down until we run out of our monkeys. And I'm gonna need your help. All right? <clears throat> Are we ready? Are we ready to make some music together? <clears throat> All right. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped their head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. All right. So we had five monkeys. Now we're going to lose one. So how many monkeys do we have? Four, right? Good job. Are right, you ready? Four little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped their head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. All right. So now we had four monkeys. Now we're going to take one away. So how many monkeys do we have now? All right. Three. Tres, right? Let's try it. Three little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped their head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, There's no more monkeys jumping on the bed. All right, so we had three monkeys. Now we're going to take one away. How many monkeys do we have left? Uh, you're right. Two. Dos. Two little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped their head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, There's no more monkeys jumping on the bed. All right. So now we had two monkeys. And we're going to lose one more, which brings our total of monkeys to. One little monkey jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped their head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, There's no more monkeys jumping on the bed. All right, we had one monkey. Now that monkey is gone. So how many monkeys do we have left? That's right, no more monkeys. No little monkeys jumping on the bed. None fell off to bump their head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said. 
it's time for these little monkeys to go to bed. Yeah! <laughs> Good job, everyone. Nice job, nice job. All right, all right, all right. Okay, for our next song. We're gonna do, we're gonna do a song in Spanish. Vamos a cantar una canción en español. Y esa canción se llama De Colores. And this song is called De Colores. And it's about all the different colors of the rainbow and how wherever we go, whether we're inside or outside, we can always look around and see all the different colors of the rainbow around us, right? awesome thing. Next time you go outside, look around. See if you can find something red and green and blue and pink and yellow. All right. <clears throat> Are we ready? Estamos listos? It was like this. Deco, de colores, de colores, de viste los campos de la primavera. De colores, de colores, de... Ooh, this is not correct. Oh. That's what it is. Sometimes I mess up too. It's okay though. <laughs> Are we ready? <laughs> Am I ready? All right. De colores, de colores se visten los campos de la primavera. De colores, de colores son los pajaritos que vienen afuera. De colores, de colores es algo que vemos lucir. Por eso los grandes amores de muchos colores me gustan a mí. Y por eso los grandes amores de muchos colores me gustan a mí. Canta el gallo, canta el gallo con el kiki. La gallina, la gallina. Cara, cara, cara y cara. Los polluelos, los polluelos con el tío, tío y tío y tío. Y por eso los grandes amores de muchos colores me gustan a mí. Y por eso los grandes amores de muchos colores me gustan a mí. Good job, everyone. Nice job, nice job. Whew. We did it. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> For this next song, I'm going to need your help. This song is about farmer. And on this farmer's farm is every animal that you can think of. It's a pretty big farm. So, we're going to get to a point of this song that I'm going to choose an animal and I need your help to let me know what sound does that animal make. All right? And the song is called Old Mexican. Esta canción se llama Old Mexican. Are we ready? <clears throat> Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. And on our farm, we had a... Friends, can you tell me what sound does a cow make? Que dice la vaca? A cow goes moo, right? La vaca dice moo. Of course it does. Are you ready to sing it? We had a cow, un español, una vaca, e i e i o, with a moo, moo, 
here and I move, move there. Here I move, there I move, everywhere I move, move. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on our farm we had a... Ooh. Oh, we'll rewind this back to the first song. What sound does a monkey make? What do you say? El mono. The monkey goes. <gasps> ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Right? Can we put our hands up like this and pretend we're monkeys? Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Like that. Good job. Nice job. So we had a monkey, or in Espanol, un mono. E -I -E -I -O. With a ooh, ooh here and a ah, ah there. Here, ooh, there, ah, uh, everywhere, ooh, ah, uh, oh, McDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on our farm we had a, how about a snake? Ooh, what noise? What sound does a snake make? ¿Qué dice la culebra? The snake goes, slither, 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 right? Slither, slither, slither like this. Can we try that? We had a snake, or in Espanol, una culebra. E -I -E -I -O. With a slither, slither here and a slither, slither there. Here, a slither, there, a slither, everywhere, a slither, slither. Old MacDonald had a farm. E -I -E -I -O. And on our farm, we had a sound does a dinosaur make? Ooh, how about a Tyrannosaurus Rex? What sound does it make? I don't really know either, not gonna lie. But I think, if I had to guess, it goes something along the lines of, <gasps> rawr! Can we do that? We can use our hands too to make a big dinosaur mouth. Rawr! Right? Así dice el dinosaurio. Try it. We had a Tyrannosaurus Rex. E -I -E -I -O. Oh, with a rah rah here and a rah rah there. Here, rah, there, rah, everywhere. Rah rah. Oh, McDonald had a farm. E -I -E -I -O. We'll do one more. And on our farm, we had a. Mm. Como dice el perro? What does a dog say? Dog goes woof, woof, woof. Right? It goes woof, woof, woof. Así dice el perro. Of course it does. Can we sing it? We had a dog, or in Espanol, un perro. E-I-E-I-O. With a woof, woof here and a woof, woof there. Here, woof, there, woof, everywhere. Woof, woof, only Donald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. Yeah! Nice job, everyone. Good job singing. Good job dancing. Whew. All right. <clears throat> For this next song, uh, let's do another song in Spanish. Vamos a cantar otra canción en español. Y esta canción se llama La Araña Pequeñita. La Araña Pequeñita. This song is called La Araña Pequeñita. And you might know it as the Itsy Bitsy Spider. Right? So we're going to do, vamos a, vamos a uh, hacer arañas con nuestras manos. Right? We're going to make some spiders with our hands. We can do it like this. Una araña grande, una, gra una araña pequeñita, así. You can make a really big spider, or a tiny, tiny little spider like this, right? However you wish. No, no, no wrong way to do this one. Can we try it? Estamos listos? <clears throat> Let me see those spiders. Put those spiders in the air. Araña pequeñita subió, subió, subió. Vino la lluvia y se la llevó. 
ensayo el sol y todo lo seco. La araña pequeñita subió, subió, subió. What do you think? Now, we can sing that song faster. Lo podemos cantar más rápido. Uh, sí. All right. A ver los arañas. Let me see your spiders. Are you ready? Estamos listos. La araña pequeñita subió, subió, subió. Vino la lluvia y se la llevó. Salió el sol y todo lo seco. La araña pequeñita subió, subió, subió. Yeah! Nice job, everyone. Good job, good job, good job. Woo! All right. This next song. Believe it or not, I'm gonna need your help. Can you show me with your hand, con tus manos? How does the wheels in the bus? What do the wheels in the bus do? Como hacen las ruedas del camión? They go round and round, right? The wheels in the bus, they go round and round, just like this. Can we sing it? No podemos cantar. A ver. You ready? <clears throat> The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. Now, if it were raining outside, we'd have to turn our wipers on, right? So, with our hands, can you show me what do the wipers on the bus do? wipers they go swish 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 right swish 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 like that can we sing it let's try the wipers on the bus go swish 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 the wipers on the bus go swish 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 all through the town nice job good job good job so what about the horn on the bus? What does the horn on the bus say? When we press that horn, what does it sound like? It goes beep, 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 right? Beep, beep, beep. Can we sing it? <clears throat> the horn on the bus goes beep, 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 um, nice job, nice job. Now, what about the babies on the bus? Como hacen los bebés? What do the babies on the bus do? They go, wah, 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 right? Can we pretend we're all babies for a minute? Wah, 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 just like that. Are you ready? <clears throat> the babies on the bus go, wah, wah, wah. Now what about the parents? So the babies are crying, so the parents are there to comfort them, right? To make them feel better. So the baby or the parents are going shh, 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 to the babies, right? Shh, shh, shh. Now, do you think? Do you think? can sing this really quietly. Lo podemos cantar así, despacio. Can we try it? Let's try it. Are you ready? The parents on the bus go shh, The parents on the bus go shh, All through the town. Yeah! <laughs> Good job. Nice job, nice job. Whew. All right, friends. <clears throat> We're going to do another song in Spanish. Vamos a cantar otra canción en español. Esta canción se llama 
Los Pollitos. This song is called Los Pollitos. And we're going to try this song twice. We'll do it slow, and then we'll try it faster. So this is a good song to break out those musical instruments if you have them. And remember, if you don't have musical instruments, it's totally okay, because guess what? We always have our hands, we can clap along, we always have our voices, we can sing along. And if you want, and if you're able to, you can always get up and dance as well, right? All right. <clears throat> Estamos listos. Los pollitos dicen pío, pío, pío. Cuando tienen hambre, cuando tienen frío. La gallina busca el maíz, el trigo. Le da la comida y le presta abrigo. Va a su dos alas. A buscaditos, duerme los pollitos hasta el otro día. Okay. Now, do you think we can sing this faster? ¿Lo podemos cantar más rápido? ¿Así? Are you ready? Uf, ¿Estamos listos? Los pollitos dicen, pío, 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 cuando tienen hambre, cuando tienen frío. La gallina busca el maíz, el trigo, le da la comida y le presta pido. Da a sus alas, a sus discaditos, venme los pollitos hasta el otro día. Good job, friends. Nice job, nice job singing. Nice job dancing. Nice job playing along, right? Remember, we're here to play music together. Estamos aquí para tocar música juntos, right? So, we have two more songs. Tenemos dos canciones más. And, ooh, this is also a good one. It's also a good one to get up and dance if you're able to. The song is about a family of sharks. And uh, some might know this song as Baby Shark. And it's played kind of fast, so it's a good one to get up and dance, right? Are we ready? Estamos listo. Esta canción se llama Baby Shark. <clears throat> Okay, are we ready? <laughs> Am I ready? Baby shark, baby shark, baby shark, baby shark, baby shark, baby shark, mommy shark, mommy shark, mommy shark, mommy shark, daddy shark, daddy shark, daddy shark, daddy shark. Grandma shark, do 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 do. Grandma shark, do 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 do. Grandma shark, do 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 do. Grandma shark. Grandpa shark, do 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 do. Grandpa shark, do 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 do. Grandpa shark, do 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 do. Grandpa shark. Let's go hunt, do 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 do. Let's go hunt, do 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 do. Let's go hunt, do 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 do. Let's go hunt. Uh oh, run away, do 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 do. Run away, do 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 do. Run away, do 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 do. Run away. Woo! Say bye, lot do 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 do. Say bye, lot do 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 do. Say bye, lot do 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 do. Say bye, lot. It's the end of the day, it's the end of the day, it's the end of the day, it's the end. Baby Shark. Yeah! Good job. Nice job, friends. Nice job. Woo! We have time for one more song. Tenemos tiempo para una canción más. <clears throat> y esta canción también 
en español y se llama Un Elefante. So, our last song is also in Spanish and it's called Un Elefante. And it's about a group of elephants who are trying to balance on a tiny, tiny spider web. So if you can imagine, we have this tiny, tiny spider web and our elephants are trying to balance on it, right? And I'm going to need your help. We're going to get to a point of the song where we need to call for the next elephant to join us. And what we need to do is together, we need to say the word elefante, like this, right? Pretty simple. And if you want, we can practice it. So on the count of three, let's all say the word elefante together, right? So in tres, vamos a decir la palabra elefante juntos. Are you ready? One, two, three. Elefante. Nice job. Just like that. Just like that. <clears throat> All right. Are you ready? Estamos listos. Un elefante se balanceaba sobre la tela de una araña. Como veía que resistía, fueron a llamar otro elefante. next elephant. But remember, this is only going to work if we do this together. Are you ready? One, two, three. Elefante. Good job. Nice job. So we had one elephant. Now we need to get one more. How many elephants do we have? We have one, two, right? So, ¿qué viene después del número uno? Uno, dos. So, ya tenemos dos elefantes. Are you ready? Dos elefantes se balanceaban sobre la tela de una araña. Como veía que resistía, fueron a llamar otro elefante. You ready? We got to call for the next one. On the count of three. One. Two, three, elefante. Nice job. But now, friends, what comes after the number two? ¿Qué sigue después el número dos? That's one, two, three, right? Uno, dos, tres. So ya tenemos tres elefantes. So now we have three Elefantes, are you ready to sing it? <clears throat> Tres elefantes se balanceaba sobre la tela de una araña. Como veía que resistía, fueron a llamar otro elefante. So now, remember, all together now, on the count of three. One, two, three. Elefante. Nice job, nice job. So now, what comes after the number three? ¿Qué sigue después del número tres? We have one, two, three, four, right? Uno, dos, tres y cuatro. So ya tenemos cuatro elefantes. So now we have four elefantes all trying to balance on the spider web together. Are you ready to sing it? <clears throat> Cuatro elefantes se balanceaba sobre la tela de una araña. Como veía que resistía, fueron a llamar otro elefante. Oof. This is the grand finale. So we're going to call for the last elephant. Let's make sure this one's a good one. Are you ready? Elefante! Good job! So now we have, or well, we had four, we're going to add one more, which is five, right? Que sigue después del número cuatro? Cinco! Are you ready? Cinco elefantes se balanceaba sobre la tela de una araña. Como veía que resistía, fueron a llamar otro elefante. Yeah! Whew. 
Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Muchas gracias a todos para pasar este tiempo conmigo. And we have a full day of programs for you to enjoy. First, my friend Angela will be coming up right, right after I'm, I'm done with this uh, for her preschool story time at 11 o'clock. And then later on today, we have an English conversation club. We have a Mandarin English story time, a yoga story time, and an afternoon doodling program. So tenemos cinco programas más hoy, incluyendo un tiempo con, de cuentos con mi amiga Angela, que va a comenzar ahorita. Y también tenemos nuestro club de conversación en inglés a las dos, pero tienes que registrar para este programa en nuestra website, right? And you can check out our website at smcl.org to see the full schedule and to register for that English Conversation Club. So please visit our website, smcl.org, para ver nuestro web, nuestro calendario y también para registrar para este programa. Okay? Thank you all. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Good morning. Welcome to this preschool story time. And as Kenny said, my name is Angela, and I'll be doing preschool story time with you today. Um, I want to remind you, um, in case you didn't catch that, um, can you get, uh, say that our website, you can get at smcl.org. Um, you can go there to get um, any of the books that I'm reading today um, using the Overdrive platform. You can get your eBooks there. You can get audio books there. You can go to our website and get, um, you can stream movies, you can get music. There's all kinds of things and um, we have uh, programs too. So you should check those out, okay? All right, um, so the way I start my story times is we're gonna show our hands. Can you show your hands? Open and shut them, open and shut them. Raise your hands up high, high, high. Open and shut them, open and shut them. Time to say goodbye, bye, bye. You know what? That was not the right song. That was the song that we sing at the end. We're not ending, we're starting, right? Silly me. All right, let's show our fingers again. Wiggle them, wiggle them, put them in the air. Wiggle them, wiggle them, mess them in your hair. Wiggle them, wiggle them, give a little clap. Wiggle them, wiggle them, put them in your lap. Oh, sometimes we just get things upside down, but we're on the right track now, right? Okay, let's start with our first book. This one is called The Emperor's Egg. And this is by Martin Jenkins and illustrated by Jane Chapman. And illustrated means this person did the pictures. And what do we see on the cover here? Who is this? Does it look like a baby penguin? And where is he sitting? Let's find out. All right. So here are bigger penguins. This one has a lot of words. So bear with me while I read this to you. There are 17 kinds of penguin, but the emperor is the only one that breeds in Antarctica in midwinter. The adults arrive at their breeding areas, more, often more than 100 miles from the open sea in late autumn. A few weeks later, the female lays her single egg and returns to the sea, leaving the male to keep the egg warm until it hatches a couple of months later. At first, the male and female take turns caring for the chick, but soon it is big enough to be left while both parents go fishing for its food in the sea. By the time it is four months old, the young penguin's coat of down has been replaced by adult feathers and now also sets off it now also sets off for the sea where it has to start taking care of itself. So it starts to take care of itself at four months. That's really young, right, for humans. All right, there's the title page, the emperor's egg. Down at the very bottom of the world, there's a huge island that's almost completely covered in snow and ice. It's called Antarctica and it's the coldest, windiest place on earth. So here is a picture of the world, and right at the bottom there, there's Antarctica. The weather's bad enough there in summer, but in winter, it's really terrible. 
It's hard to imagine anything actually living there. So this is what it looks like. It's covered in snow and ice, nothing else for miles. Oh, but wait, what's that shape over there? You see that? That's not snow. That's not ice. It can't be. Yes. It's a penguin. There he is. It's not just any old penguin either. It's a male emperor penguin, the biggest penguin in the world. And he's doing a very important job. He's taking care of his egg. He didn't lay it himself, of course. Because male penguins can't lay eggs, right? It's the females. Male is a daddy and the female is a mommy. His mate did that a few weeks ago. But very soon afterward, she turned around and waddled off to the sea. Oh, there she's going. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye, mommy penguin. That's where female emperor penguins spend most of the winter swimming about, getting as fast as they can eating as much as they can, and generally having a very nice time, as far as you can tell. Do they look like they're having fun? It looks like fun to swim through the ocean really fast. Which leaves a father penguin stuck on the ice with his egg. Oh, there, see, those are his feet. And there's the egg. Now, the most important thing about egg sitting is to stop your egg from getting cold. That means it has to be kept off the ice and out of the wind. And what better way to do that than to rest it on your feet and tuck it right up under your tummy. There it is, covered in this down, which is just what the father penguin does. And that's how he'll stay for two whole months until his egg is ready to hatch. Can you imagine it? Standing around in the freezing cold with an egg on your feet for two whole months? What do you think? Do you think he could do it? I don't think we can do it. <laughs> What's more, there's nothing for the father penguin to eat on land. And because he's egg sitting, he can't go off to the sea to feed. So that means two whole months with an egg on your feet and no dinner for breakfast or lunch or snacks. I don't know about you, but I'd be very, very miserable. Mm -hmm. Luckily, the penguins don't seem to mind too much. They have thick feathers and lots of fat under their skin to help keep them warm. And when it gets really cold and windy, they all snuggle up together and shuffle over the ice in a great big huddle. Wouldn't that be something to see? Most of the time, the huddle trundles along very, very slowly. So they're all moving together over the ice very, very slowly. But sometimes when the penguins get to a particularly slippery slope, uh-oh. They slide down it on their tummies, pushing themselves along with their flippers, always remembering to take care of their egg and trying hard not to bump into each other. Can you imagine trying to slide down this hill with the egg still under your feet or um, on top of your feet, I mean, and under your tummy? That's pretty talented of these penguins, don't you think? And that's how the father penguin spends the winter until one day he hears a chip, chip, chip. His egg is starting to hatch. It takes a day or so, but finally the egg cracks right open and out pops a penguin chick. There he is, just like on the cover of the book, right? Now the father penguin has two jobs to do. He has to keep the chick warm and he has to feed it. What do you think he's going to give him to eat? Let's see. Oh, and of course it asks the question, but on what? The chick is too small to be taken off to the sea to catch food, and it can't be left behind on the ice. Well, deep down in the father penguin's throat, there's a pouch where he makes something 
a little like milk. And that's what he feeds to his hungry chick. Oh, he comes with food. <laughs> the father penguin can make only enough of the milky stuff to feed his chick for a couple of weeks. But just as he's about to run out, a dot appears on the horizon. It gets closer and closer and yes. So horizon is the line that you see when you're looking out like across the ocean um, and here across the ice. Who is it? It's mom. She starts trumpeting hello and the father penguin starts trumpeting hello and the chick whistles. The racket goes on for hours and it really does sound as if they're extremely pleased to see each other. Aww. As soon as things have, cal have calmed down, the mother penguin is sick, right into her chick's mouth. Yuck, you may think. Yum, thinks the chick, and gobbles it all down. So all that food that the mom was eating while she was away, she can make it come back up to feed the chick. And it's the mother's turn to take care of the chick now while the father sets off to the sea for a well-earned meal of his own. About time too, I'd say. All right, and that's the end. There's the back of the book. And that's the end of the story, The Emperor's Egg. Did you enjoy that? That was fun, huh? Yeah, it's fun to learn about animals and I, I love to do that. I love to um, learn about what they do and um, how they eat, things like that. All right, so now I have I'm a Little Penguin and this is um, a little song that you might be, you can, uh, when you hear it, you'll be familiar with the tune, but the words are different because it's about this guy. Can you see, can you see him? Yeah, he's a little dark. He's a little penguin. And that's what the song is called, I'm a Little Penguin. I'm a little penguin, black and white, I waddle to the left. So he's going to my left, there he goes. I waddle to the right, here he comes back. <laughs> I cannot fly, but I can swim. So I waddle to the water and I jump right in. That's what penguins do. If you've ever seen them at the zoo or maybe at the California Academy of Sciences, yeah, and they can swim and they swim really fast, right? We can, anyway. All right, let's sing that one one more time. I'm a little penguin, black and white. I waddle to the left. Here he is going to, to my left. <laughs> I waddle to the right. I cannot fly, but I can swim. I waddle to the water and I jump right in. All right, there he is, he's swimming and he's having a good time. Yay, that was fun. All right, we're going to read our second book now. So I'm gonna share my screen with you. And this one's called, A Bedtime for Bear. And this is by Bonnie Becker, illustrated by Katie McDonald Denton. And you remember what illustrated means, right? It means that Katie did the pictures. And what do we see on the cover here? Oh, here's, here's the bear. And who's this? What does this look like? It looks like a mouse, right? And bear looks like he's ready for bed. He's got a cap on. And this is read with permission from Candlewick. Bedtime for bear. And I don't remember if I said the last book was read with permission by Candlewick, but it was also. Okay, everything had to be just so for Bear's bedtime. His glass of water had to sit on the exact right spot on his bedstand. His favorite pillow must be nicely fluffed. His nightcap needed to be snug. Most of all, it had to be quiet. Very, very quiet. Shh. See, and he has a sign on his door that says, do not disturb. Oh, there's Bear. One evening, Bear heard a tap, tap, tapping on his front door. 
And what is Bear doing here? He's reading, right? He's sitting on his chair. He's reading by the fire. But when he hears that knocking, look at his face. Does he look happy about it? No, he doesn't like to be disturbed, does he? When he opened the door, there stood Mouse. Here he is, small and gray and bright-eyed. He clasped a tiny suitcase in his paw. And there's his little suitcase. Whoop. Can you tell me what color his suitcase is? Can you tell? Yeah, it's red. I know you knew that. I'm here to spend the night, exclaimed Mouse with a happy wiggle of his whiskers. Surely we agreed on next Tuesday, protested Bear. No, said Mouse. We most definitely said tonight. Oh, said Bear. Oh, he forgot. Just like just like I did with the opening song. Bear had never had an overnight guest before. Guests could quite possibly mess things up and make noise. And Bear needed quiet, absolute quiet at that time. Even so, Bear and Mouse enjoyed an evening of checkers. Here they are playing checkers and warm cocoa. And soon it was time for bed. Remember, I must have absolute quiet, reminded Bear. Oh, indeed, said Mouse. All right, so we're going, going upstairs to go to bed. And look what Bear is carrying. He's carrying the suitcase for Mouse, just like a good host. Bear set out his glass of water. There he is with his glass of water. He adjusted his head cap here. He fluffed his favorite pillow over here and climbed into bed. It was very, very quiet. He closed his eyes. Bristle, bristle, bristle. Bear heard a noise. It was Mouse brushing his teeth. Can you see Mouse over here brushing his teeth? <clears throat> Bear cleared his throat in a reminding sort of way. Most sorry, said Mouse. Bear closed his eyes again. Hum, hum, pa pum. Mouse hummed while he put on his nightshirt. Pa pum. Absolute quiet, muttered Bear most patiently. Deepest apologies, said Mouse. There's Mouse. Creak, squeak, rattle, went Mouse's bed as he hopped in. Oh, there's his bed. Bear jammed his pillow over his ears, gritted his teeth, and closed his eyes. He was just about to drift off when... Good night, Bear, Mouse called softly. Bear tried to pretend he was asleep. Good night, Mouse called a little louder. My ears are highly sensitive, cried Bear. Really? How interesting, Mouse said. Can you hear this? Mouse mumbled into his pillow. Yes. Amazing. How about this? Mouse said from under his pillow. Quiet. Mouse slipped under his blankets, crawled to the bottom of his bed and whispered, Can you hear? Silence, Bear roared. Mouse slid from his bed, went into the closet, and said in the tiniest possible voice into the farthest, darkest, teeniest possible corner of the closet. Surely you can't. There he is in the closet. Will this torment never cease, wailed Bear. Sorry, Bear. Good night, Bear, whispered Mouse, tiptoeing back into bed as quiet as a, well, you know, so what do you think Bear thinks about Mouse trying to test his hearing, huh? He doesn't look happy, does he? No, he just wants to go to sleep. Bear fluffed his favorite pillow, adjusted his nightcap, and waited. But there was no more sound from Mouse. At last, it was quiet. Very, very quiet. Bear heard a shuffling sound. Mouse, is that you? No answer. 
They heard a quick, quick, quick on the floorboards. I know it's you. No answer. You can't fool me, Bear growled, but he didn't, he didn't sound very certain. Bear heard a low moaning noise. Mouse? Silence. Bear was sure something rustled on the floor. Mouse, he cried, wake up! Oh, did he wake him up? Look, he's jumping out of bed. Mouse stumbled out of bed, small and gray and sleepy eyed. There he is, what is it? But Bear couldn't see any rustly, moany sort of thing in his room. His room looked quite like it always looked. Nothing, lied Bear, still clutching his blanket to his chin. I must have been talking in my sleep. Bear chuckled, but it was rather quavery. Ah, said Mouse with a glance at Bear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Could I peek under your bed? asked Mouse. Sometimes I like to check for things, you know. Well, if you insist, said Bear. Nothing, said Bear, uh, Mouse from under the bed. You'll want to check behind the curtains, I suppose, Bear said. Here he is. Mouse. All clear, declared Mouse a moment later. Nothing behind the curtain. You better check the closet, offered Bear. Then you won't be the least bit nervous. Mouse came out of the closet, dusting his paws. Not a thing. Thank you, Bear. Good night. Wait, said Bear. You'll want a bedtime story, I expect, said Bear, for your nerves. For my nerves, said Mouse. Oh, indeed, I'm quite shaken. Then with an eager flick of his tail, he settled on Bear's favorite pillow. And Bear told him all about the adventures of the brave, strong Bear and the very frightened little Mouse. <laughs> Soon Bear began to yawn. Mouse yawned too. Good night, Bear, said Mouse. Good night, Mouse, Bear mumbled. Oh, oh, they look like they're sleepy. Yeah. Then Bear began to snore loudly, but Mouse just smiled. There's Bear sleeping. Mouse can't quite sleep. Bear snoring so loud. <laughs> and soon Mouse and Bear were fast asleep. Oh, yeah, he fell asleep. And that's the end, I believe. Yep. The back of the book. Okay. That was a fun story. Is it is it that hard at your house to go to sleep? Sometimes it is at my house. <laughs> All right, so I have this counting rhyme called Five Little Monsters. And here they are. And what are they doing? They're all tucked up into bed here, right? And you can do it on your hands. You can do five on your hands, and then we're gonna count down, okay? Five little monsters sleeping in my bed. One crawled out from under my spread. I called to mama, mama, and mama said, no more monsters sleeping in your bed. How many do we have left here? One, two, three, four. Four little monsters sleeping in my bed. One crawled out from under my spread. I called to mama, mama, and mama said, no more monsters sleeping in your bed. Now how many do we have left? One, two, three, right? Three little monsters sleeping in my bed. One crawled out from under my spread. I called to mama, can you guys yell? Mama! And mama said, no more monsters sleeping in your bed. All right, now there's one, two. Two little monsters sleeping in my bed. One crawled out from under my spread. I called to mama, mama. And mama said, no more monsters sleeping in your bed. Okay, now we have one left, right? One little monster sleeping in my bed. One crawled out from under my spread. I called to mama and mama said, no more monsters sleeping in your bed. And now we have none. And here's a blanket. No little monster sleeping in my bed. 
None crawled out from under my spread. I called to Mama, Mama! And Mama said, what do you think Mama said? There are no more monsters now, go to bed. <laughs> I bet you hear that, huh, sometimes. Go to bed. All right, that was five little monsters. We have one more book. This one's called Little Hoot. This is by Amy Krause Rosenthal and Jen Kors and read with permission from Chronicle Books. Little Hoot. What is Little Hoot here? Can you tell what kind of animal these guys are? They are owls. Little Hoot. That's the title page. Little Hoot. Once upon a branch, there lived a fellow named Little Hoot. Little Hoot was a happy little owl. He liked going to school. He liked playing hide and seek with his forest friends. He even liked it fine when Mama Owl said it was practice time. Time to practice pondering, sweetie. And pondering just means thinking. So, you know, you can kind of like look around and think, think, think. Oh, and here in this picture, they're playing hide and seek. Okay, now practice staring. Where's he staring? Staring right. Can you guys stare right? Oh, my right is that way. Staring left. Staring right. <laughs> but there was one thing Little Who did not like. What do you think that is? Bedtime. He doesn't like bedtime. Because when you're an owl, you have to stay up late, late, late. That's just the way it is. All my other friends get to go to bed so much earlier than me. Why do I always have to stay up and play? It's not fair. If you want to grow up to be a wise owl, you must stay up late, said Papa Owl. And besides, I don't give a hoot what time your friends go to bed. In this family, we go to bed late. Rules of the roost. Stay up and play for one more hour and then you can go to sleep, Mama Owl compromised. One whole hour, he boohooed. One whole hour, she cooed. So off he went. There he is with his blankie. When I grow up, I'm going to let my kids go to bed as early as they want. He played sword. There he is playing sword. He played on the jungle gym. He built a fort. He jumped in the leaves. He jumped on the bed. Now can I stop playing, pleaded Little Hoot. 10 more minutes of playing, mister. And please don't ask me again. All right, the young owl scowled. One minute? What's he playing here? He's on his skateboard. Two minutes? Three minutes. He's doing tricks. Four minutes. Oh, now here he's lying down. <laughs> Five minutes. Six minutes. Seven minutes. Eight minutes. Nine minutes, look, he's reading on his skateboard. And here he looks kind of sleepy. Oh, did we do nine? Oh, yeah, we did nine minutes. Sorry, 10 minutes. There, I played for one whole hour. Now can I go to bed? Yes, now you can go to bed, but woo -hoo, woo -hoo, bedtime. And little who flew right into bed. Here he is, right in bed. But look, but wait, called, stalled mama. Mama Owl, what about a bedtime story? And don't forget a glass of water, added Papa Owl. But it was too late. Little Hoot was already fast asleep. Snooze, snore, drool. Do you ever drool when you're asleep? I think everyone does. So they tucked in his feathers, gave him a peck on the cheek, and the owl lived happily ever after. There he is asleep. And that's the end of the book. All right. Now I have a song called Two Little Owls Sitting on a Hill. And I have my puppets here to help me. You guys ready? Two little owls sitting on a hill. One named Jack and one named Jill. Fly away, Jack. Fly away, Jill. Come back, Jack. Come back, Jill. 
two little owls sitting on a hill, one named Jack and one named Jill. All right, one more time. Ready? Two little owls sitting on a hill, one named Jack and one named Jill. Fly away, Jack. Fly away, Jill. Come back, Jack. Come back, Jill. Two little owls sitting on a hill, one named Jack and one named Jill. All right, good job. All right, now we'll sing our closing song. Are you guys ready? Open and shut them, open and shut them. Raise your hands up high, high, high. Open and shut them, open and shut them. Time to say goodbye, bye, bye. All right, but before we say goodbye for real, I just want to remind you that Min E will be doing bilingual Mandarin and English story time at three o'clock. There's yoga story time with Rachel at 3.30 and doodling with Lynn at four o'clock today. And you can check out our website at smcl.org for all our programs. I'm Angela and I will be back next Tuesday for another preschool story time. Bye-bye, thanks for viewing. <laughs>